thank her um, for giving up her time to share her wisdom on, on around money, finances, investment, which is one of the most critical part of the Journey New Entrepreneurship Program. But also to say to you guys um, that we're gearing up now. We, we, we're closing 2015. Um, we've trained 1,000 entrepreneurs. We've um, mentored them. We've also provided the most phenomenal networking opportunity through the Teeth Bootcamp. And above all, we have dispersed um, to almost all of the entrepreneurs who are, were on our program $5,000 um, in seed capital investment so that they can really now begin to build a proof of concept of their businesses. So that's a commitment that we launched the program with in January 2015, and we have fulfilled that commitment. And now in the last week of December, we have, last week of November, we're now getting ready to make the announcement for T 2016. And the application portal will open on the 1st of January. 2016. So all of you out there with your networks, on your Twitter accounts, on your social media, please begin to, sh we will begin to share information about the 2016 application, but the information, the program cycle, the program design will remain exactly the same. The seven pillars of teeth, we just need you to begin to prepare yourself for the opening of the portal with your extraordinary business idea that will um, transform Africa and look forward to receiving applications from you in January. With that, one of the most, you know, the fundamentals to the application and to managing a business is money, um, whether it's $5,000 or $5 million or $100 million, um, you need to have certain skills and certain tools, and that is exactly what Tony Sun is going to share. And I just want to also say, Please do do read her book. Yes, too can, you too can maximize your life. Your life. Um, it's available on Amazon. Kindle, but no doubt she'll talk more about it. It's an incredible practical book um, for you know you as entrepreneurs, you as business leaders, but also many of you who are women entrepreneurs and who are talking about you know can I have it all? I think Toyn and I believe that yes, you can have both. You can be a great mother a great wife and an extraordinary and be very successful as a professional woman. Over to you. I'd like to say thank you to Paminda and the rest of the wonderful team at the Tony Lumen Foundation for the opportunity to be a part of this webinar. I'd like to say hello to all of you out there who are logged in to this webinar. I'm looking forward to sharing with you um, on how to access finance for your entrepreneurial dream. So, I have been my discussion around financing more entrepreneurial dream. My name is Olua Toinsani. I'm the group CEO of United Capital PLC. Um, United Capital is um, an investment banking and other financial services group um, that um, is focused on supporting African governments, Africans, and individuals in um, providing financial solutions to the various projects. And of course, I'm sure you know that uh, governments have projects, companies have projects, individuals have projects as well. Um, I've had more than 25 years experience in investment banking, asset management, and uh, other investor services, trusteeship, um, custody of investments. So I, I do, and I have a law. So I believe that gives me uh, a broad-based understanding of some of the issues that may be pertinent to the finance um, solutions that you may need for your entrepreneurial objectives. So I'm looking forward to responding to your questions. Right. So the first question says, I just followed you on Twitter and I'm amazed at your mission statement. I am a French-born Ivorian Burkinabi lady who is on her way back to Africa from the UK. Um, passionate about the African Renaissance and um, being a diaspora yourself, you, your question today is how can 
the diaspora participates in bridging Africa's funding gap on infrastructure and various development projects, whilst making reasonable returns on investments. I like to say that um, there's a huge pool of um, funding available in the diaspora. I understand the African diaspora invests, according to the World Bank, about $453 billion um, every year. So definitely there's a huge pool of funds out there. Um, we eagerly encourage Africans in diaspora to see the infrastructure challenges facing Africa as an investment opportunity. Now, so for you as um, an African in diaspora, you can invest in directly by buying stocks of African companies, investing in, um, we have um, information technology, we have um, health um, management companies, we have, um, so the health sector, I think it's a good sector to look at. Um, power sector, definitely it's a sector to look at. Um, one of the largest, about the largest infrastructure challenges facing Africa will be with regard to power and to roads. So transport industry is also a very good area. Transportation industry is a good one to look at. So you can buy stocks of existing companies or you can come home and um, build your own company. And, um, and um, that's what we were looking forward to. We're looking forward to Africans returning to set up you know, businesses of their own. And um, some of these areas we have discussed, food, agribusiness is an area that we must not forget. Um, of course, you know the food sufficiency challenge that is facing a lot of African nations. Um, you hardly see businesses, well-run businesses around um, food fail. There's, 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 there are massive opportunities you know, in that area. So these are some of the areas in which you can invest as um, an African in diaspora. And I would to, to look at it. Thank you very much. I'll just take the next question away. Uh, you know, Nigerian hope you be an entrepreneur. You've written a business proposal and a feasibility study of the intended business you wish to venture into. Unfortunately, you have not been able to secure any facility that will enable you to kickstart the business. What are the practical ideas needed? Ha <laughs> ha. So the first uh, hint that I have here is that you might want to consider applying to um, be approved as one of the lucky 1,000 African entrepreneurs that are going to get into the Tony Lumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. And that is TIP 2016. I'm sure you know that the first batch has been concluded successfully with most of the entrepreneurs successfully accessing the funding that is available. And you know that it's not only funding that is available on this program. I think more importantly, this program also gives you practical tools to drive your startup or your business. And so you are part of uh, about three month long um, program, which ends with a very uh, impactful bootcamp. So that is one way. Now, I need to let you know that most startups, the biggest companies across the world, started as very small companies. So Apple was started in somebody's garage. Facebook started as a very small company. Um, Nike, so many other big names, Google. So you need to understand that most of the time, these small companies do face challenges accessing loans because you talk about facilities in your question. Now, self-funding is a very good to start. And self-funding means you start small. You start with the funds that you can raise from your personal resources and friends and family. Uh, friends and family, are usually um, understanding and less demanding in terms of the return expectation and willing to give you time to run your business for a while before they begin to make serious expectations. So you want to look at friends and family. Of course, you know that there are venture capital associations, I mean companies. You also know that there are you know, angel um, finance entities and individuals that can support you, angel investors. But 
Very, very importantly, you must have a well-articulated business plan that you can use. Even when you have your friends and family, you need a well-articulated business plan that explains to them precisely what you want to sell, if you're selling, who you would be marketing your products to or your services to, how you expect to fund the products and services over time, how you expect to um, collect the payments effectively, and of course, your plan for growth and expansion over time. You need to articulate clearly, most importantly, your unique um, proposition, value proposition that makes your business better, more attractive, cheaper, more refined, or in some way or the other, more um, superior to what the next man is offering. That is very, very important. Whoever you are presenting to, you must have your facts and your figures at your fingertips and have a very good understanding of what exactly you're going to be selling. Thank you. I'll take the next question. Um, you run a distribution company in Kenya since you started your business. You have not banked any money. No, have you made any major purchases? How can you properly account for your finances or save? Well, the first advice I have for you is that I want to commend you because you have already recognized that this is a challenge. Um, it is not an ideal model to spend directly from the proceeds of your business. Because what it does is that it deprives you of the records that you're going to need to convince prospective investors or other you know, counterparties in future as to exactly the feasibility of your business and that you're actually making money. So you need to open a bank account for the business, separate and distinct from your personal bank account, and begin to put the proceeds, no matter how small, of that business into that account, and then begin to draw out of that account for the business. So keeping proper financial records and financial discipline is very, very critical to the startup. It's very important. Um, as you begin to do that, the day you approach um, an institution or you approach investors to invest in your business, you will have records to show. You have your sales figures to show. You'll be able to show them that this is exactly how much sales you're making. This is the payment pattern from your customers. And um, these are also the needs. The, this is how much you spend on your input into the business, your raw materials, your, you know, what you spend as marketing commission. It's very important to keep accurate and consistent financial records. I hope that is useful. Um, somebody is asking if I have any tips or advice looking to get more funding, especially for establishing enough runway for the business to actually take off and start sustaining itself. I'll use this opportunity to share that, in my opinion, cash is the lifeblood of any business, especially a startup. A lot of businesses have failed, not because the business idea was not viable, not because there was no clear value proposition, but simply because the business ran out of cash. And um, so it's very useful to know that you will need funding for your business. And one of the ways you want to go about this, like I said earlier, is to start small and then gradually grow the business and fund expansion of your business from actual funds that you are raising in the business. You also want to look at the possibility of having funding from your suppliers. You can have suppliers that, ex that, ex that can extend lines of credit to you, so you don't have to actually pay cash for everything that you get from your suppliers. So you can get inputs into your business, raw materials into your business, and pay from the proceeds of your sales. So that is one area of funding that people don't look at. Um, there's also an assumption many times that you need to buy and own all the assets that you're going to deploy from your business. But there are a lot of rental and lease opportunities that are open to you. And that is also a form of financing for your business. Of course, 
the traditional methods of funding from commercial banks, um, your retail banking institutions are also available. Um, I need to use the opportunity to tell you that at United Capital, we manage a few funds um, that are targeted at small and medium scale companies. Um, the Nigerian Local Content Fund is one such fund that we are part of, we are one of the managers of that fund. But that, of course, you know, is um, specifically for the um, all upstream oil and gas sector. We also have recently been appointed as um, a joint fund manager to the KFW ALCB fund, that is the Africa Local Content Bond Fund. Um, and um, this fund also invests in African projects. Um, microfinance institutions, for example, are one of the target, um, um, target types of businesses that can access this funding. So those are some of the funding options you have. I, I must not uh, forget to mention that development banks, specifically like the Bank of Industry. Bank of Industry in Nigeria has uh, a joint um, funding arrangement with, um, has um, put together about 1.2 trillion naira over time with the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is meant to fund small and medium scale enterprises. Now, the bank also appoints advice that will help you to know what you need to do to qualify for these funds. So those are some of the funding options that are available to you, amongst others. Um, somebody wants to know what is the rule of thumb in accessing financing. The rule of thumb, I would say to you in accessing financing is know your business and know it well. Because you you need to be able to convince your intended um, financier that your business is valuable, is viable, that you have a market, that, that the prospects of the business going forward are positive. So for that, you will need for example to have historical sales and um, um, other financial records at your fingertips so that you can demonstrate. And if you are completely a startup and so you don't have historical sales figures, you want to look at historical sales figures of peer businesses. And this is the trend and that's the trajectory by which they go. And so you can show. And of course, you just see figures to know exactly what's happening in that industry. What are the opportunities available in that industry that you intend to exploit? So the rule of the thumb is please have your facts and figures, have your numbers, have them well articulated and be able to explain it to those who are fund or you are approaching for funds. Of course, you know that you can approach them for either equity or debt. Equity means that they will become joint owners in the business with you. It gives you um, a degree of, um, I would say maybe space in the sense that you don't have a fixed obligation to pay in return. They are partners in the business. It means that if the business makes money, you will share the profits with them. If the business does not do well, you're not compelled to make any immediate payments to them, any payments to them. But of course, that means you will be ceding over control of your business, part, part of control of your business, because your equity partners are joint owners and they will have a right to be on the board, they will have a right to participate in decision making. Alternatively, you can approach somebody for a loan. The uh, downside of that is whether you make money, don't make money, you need to pay back the principal plus the interest as agreed with the providers of the debt capital. I'll take another question here, which is, what is the biggest challenge in starting up a business? What is the biggest challenge in starting up a business? I'm sure you know that um, this, for different people starting businesses, many times they see it as different. But I have discovered that one of them is access to finance. Most people have amazing business um, ideas and they do not know where to go for funding or how to go about funding. But I don't necessarily think that is the biggest challenge for every business. I think many times 
the, big, big, uh, the biggest challenge is the person who wants to set up the business. A lot of people are dreamers and their projects never proceed beyond the dream stage. Um, the entrepreneurial commitment to articulate your business plan and to follow through on it, I think is probably the most important ingredient for success in a business. And that's why I will put that on the table as very, very high on the list. Um, another challenge many times is that of um, finding skilled and skilled, competent and loyal personnel. Most businesses are challenged with the capacity gap or the personnel gap that we find um, across Africa. So those are some of the critical um, challenges that I think that face a startup business. How can I operate without seeking funding stock loans? Well, I did say that um, funds or cash is the lifeblood of this. So you can't operate without funding, but you can operate without loans. Um, and I've said that funding can be self-funding in the sense that you start the business small with the resources that are available within your family, you gradually grow the business, and then you fund the business from the proceeds of the business, you fund your goods. At some stage, it's very useful and very helpful to be able to expand by external funding. Now, like I said earlier, that could come by way of loans, or it could come by looking for other equity partners who will invest in your business. So if you're looking for how to fund your uh, business with loans, then we'll be talking about looking for participants in the business, joint owners in the business. So raising more equity in the business. And that could be either from friends and family, or it could be from a, a joint venture partner. It could be from an angel investor. It could be even from, um, by uh, accessing crowdfunding, which is becoming popular across the world. That way you um, put out, put your business ideas online through a crowdfunding um, solutions provider and people have an opportunity to invest even small sums from, you know, across the universe of investors. Somebody found out that they need a large sum of money to register their business, and they're wondering if this is not a waste of resources. It depends on the nature of business. There are businesses that you can start. You can sell your oranges, your cupcakes, your um, smoothie, your fresh juice, you know, and, and, and do that as a sole proprietorship. And, and do that without registration. But when you want to scale up, but there are regulated businesses, of course. And if you are operating in a regulated business area, or you want, you will need to register the business and properly document what you're doing. Um, in the long run, it's not a waste of money because the proper documentation of who your business is, where it operates from, is part of the um, prerequisites that serious business partners and investors will look at as evidence that this is a business that they can partner with and they can invest in. So but, um, it's not uh, it's not a waste of funds, but um, you can definitely start doing start your cottage business even side by side with the registration process. You should not tell yourself that I'm not going to do anything until I have registered business. But of course, by the time you begin to open a bank account for the business, you will need to have some documentation um, in the business name. What are the crucial points of a business plan? All right, that's lo lovely. I, I did start by saying that um, one of the most important things in starting a business is to have a well-articulated business plan. So this is an opportunity to uh, share with you some of the contents of your business plan. I'll start by saying a well-articulated value proposition, which is what am I trying to sell? Who am I to, to produce and to market? Who am I? Who is, where is my target market? Who am I trying to sell it to? So you find that one component is your marketing plan. Who am I trying to sell it to? 
At what price will I sell it? Where will I find those whom I'm selling my products to? What will I offer them as incentives to buy from me and not to buy from my competitor? What is my unique value proposition that stands my product out from what the next man is offering? Those are some of the contents. Your funding plan is the content of your business plan. How am I going to raise finance for my business initially? Where am I raising it from? What will it cost me to raise it? And how will the business back this funding? Over what period of time will it pay back? That's very important in your business plan. Your structure, the structure of your organization will be in your business plan. So how will it be structured? Um, is this going to be a lean, mean, one, two, three, four, five team? Is this going to be a 15, 100, 500, 1,000 employee empire? How will it be structured? Um, is it going to, am I going to start as a partnership or is it going to be a limited liability company or a public company? Um, how many, um, what size of board of directors will I have? Will the governance structure of my business? Um, so structure, what are the resources that I'm going to require to drive the business? Will I need a business? Car, two, three, I can have branches, or is this completely an internet business? I'm going to sell and um, get paid completely online. So that is the location. So those are so the resources that we require, including staffing, including other assets, um, including um, web designs, you know, and all that will be part of what will be your plan. Of course, an action plan that has the steps, specific steps that you're going to take and over what period of time and who has the responsibility for each of those steps will be there. And of course, don't forget your financial costs. So over now that I'm going to start this business in the first year of the business, how much sales do I expect to make? Um, how much will I spend acquiring this size of business? And what are the other expenses that, I'm, that are going to go out? And what will be my net profit? And then we take it from there. I would say ideally, your initial plan should look at the three to five year horizon so that you know exactly you know, how you can project into the future. Um, so those, those are some of the physical contents of your business plan. What advice do you have? For an intending investment analyst, get qualified. That's my advice. You want to be an investment analyst, you want to acquire relevant qualifications. Um, I have a fellow of the system. So in Nigeria, I would say that uh, that is a good and a relevant qualification. Um, the CFA is a globally accepted. Um, Qualification, so you want to be a chartered financial analyst. Um, you take the professional register, take the professional exams, and qualify, and then begin to also network in the right groups. I'm the vice president of the Association of Investment Advisors and Portfolio Managers. That's a 30-year-old association set up by founding fathers. The founding president was the late, uh, highly respected Dr. Gamaliel Onosote. So you join these kind of associations and organizations so that you can rub minds with qualified professionals in those fields and um, you're on your way to the top. How do I get my business attractive to the world? This is good because it's very, very important in any business that you're on and um, what you would be looking to achieve quickly is brand recognition. So you want to make sure that you package, you present, you introduce, and you reinforce the message of your business um, in a very attractive way and to as broad and as wide an audience as possible. But beyond having a broad and wide audience, what is more important is targeting the audience of those who would actually buy your products and services. So branding is very important. You want to get your products to the world, package and you brand it, make it attractive 
branded packages and market it across the social media, across the you know um, the internet, market it you know through um, print media if you can afford it, electronic other electronic media, um, radio jingles and all. But I always say that content is very important. It's not enough to just go out there and tell everybody that you know this is who we are, you know, have very fantastic billboards. Make sure that those who access your products and services find you to be exactly as you have projected yourself to be in your branding. Otherwise, if you're not authentic, you lose more. So don't be in a rush to put yourself out there. Package your business properly. Make sure you have a quality product. Your services are the best, you know, that they can be. Your staff courteous and they will attend well to customers, then you put yourself out there and, 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 and the rest is hopefully. Can you shed more light on managing a company's finances? Yes, I think financial discipline is critical to the health of any business. You must have a clearly defined financial plan in terms of, and that includes your budget, and you must adhere to this budget. Um, you find businesses that are making a lot of money, but as they're making them, the um, driver of the business is spending more than he's making. And in no time at all, the business is in trouble. Um, it's very important, therefore, to have financial discipline. Very important to rationally put together a realistic budget and to adhere to that budget. It's very important to keep financial records. Very, very critical that you record everything that comes into the business and then on. Now, this documentation will help you not only to raise future finance, it will help you to manage the um, process internally. So, Management accounting is a process by which you record, you keep very good records of you know, your final affairs for the purpose of internal management of the business, to take the appropriate decisions, to know what to cut, to know what to keep doing, to know what you, to stop doing, to know what is adding value, to know what is eroding value, to know whether or not you can finance your next expansion project, or whether or not you need to hold off those decisions. Don't ever fall into the trap of over trading, going, biting more than you should, taking on committing yourself to expansion projects that you don't have sufficient funds, sufficient funding for. Financial discipline, I think, is very important in managing your company's finances. And um, on that note, I would like to say that you need to make sure that you are hiring competent, even fairly small businesses. It's still very good to have a company accountant or account officer, somebody that is helping you to keep the books. Very, very important. How can I raise funds from friends and family and how to pay back? You can raise funds from friends and family be transparent with your business. Um, they need to see records that show exactly what your business idea is worth that show exactly where you intend to source um, your customers from, what size of business you think you can generate from these customers, what are the costs that are going to come out of business, and what will be left as profit, and what are you offering them as an incentive for coming to partner with you. If you have done your homework, you've done your research, your plans are well articulated and you are transparent as to the prospects and the challenges, the likely risks of the business, then you are in a position to convince your friends and family. I recently, I have the privilege of um, mentoring for ladies. I, it's interesting that specifically ladies were assigned to me, ladies who were part of the TIP um, 2015. And, um, one of them you know, came back to let me know. They, they all successfully accessed the funding. And one of them back to let me know that her friends and family, whom she had discussed her business ideas with before, 
and who really didn't get it. Immediately, they found that she was um, on the Tonolimelu entrepreneurship program. They all had, you know, well-to-do uncles were certainly very interested in listening to her business ideas again and supporting her. So you, she had them coming. So come and tell me about this, your business. Come and tell me about this, your business. Wow, you're really on the TIP program? Oh, yeah, we'll support you. Let's, let's know about it. So, you know, that's one of the things of getting into this kind of um, mentorship programs. And I don't think, I'm not even sure there is another program exactly like this. I haven't seen one. So you want to get on a program like this because you, um, it, it's a, in a way, it's, by the time you've gone through the discipline of preparing your business plan and the boot camp and, and articulating it and um, having it um, verified and validated by you know, funding through the program, you have kind of established that you have a credible business idea, a viable business idea, and that you're serious about what you're trying to accomplish. So it's not just funding, it's training, and in a way it's validation for you. Um, how can I sustain my business? Starting can be easy, but sustaining my business is a different game. You're co correct, absolutely correct. Uh, and I would say for sustainability, go back again to financial discipline. One of the ways in which you're going to sustain your business is when you don't begin to take um, drawings um, from the business without, um, ha um, you know, without a structure. If you need to pay yourself a salary out of the business, look at what the business is and agree from the beginning with your partners or yourself as to what is a reasonable amount that the business can afford to pay you as a salary. And don't take, don't take a penny more than that until the end of the accounting period when you have actually accounted for what is profit. And then from the profit, of course, you can also pay yourself a dividend. And you want to also re retain from that profit for further investments. So sustainability, financial time is important. Liquidity is important. Like I said, cash is a lifeblood of, of your business. So if you run out of cash, you're not going to be able to take on new inventory. You're not going to be able to meet new orders from your clients. And your business may run out of steam. Um, sustainability advertisements will help you. For sustainability, also, you want to serve your existing clients excellently well so that you can be sure of repeat business from them. And you can also be sure that they will recommend you to others who would also come and enjoy your business. Um, one of the challenges um, with startups sometimes is that you don't price your product appropriately. In other words, you um, take advantage sometimes of perhaps the ignorance or the lack of options of your first set of customers. So you price the products out of work, the customer buys, you've, got, you've made a huge profit. But then one month down the line, the customers realize that, oh, actually what you sold to them was not worth that price. And so suddenly they're not coming back to you. They've gone and found somebody else. So for, for sustainability, you need to price your product appropriately. You need to uh, communicate appropriately with your target market. So you need advertisement and marketing. You need financial discipline. You need to maintain liquidity. Those are some of the things that would help to make your business sustainable. What alternative products? Of course, don't ever forget how you treat your clients. You must treat your customers right to make them want to keep coming back to you. You are not the only one. You are never the only one providing what you're providing. Even if you are, it will be for a very, very short while. What alternative products are on offer from United Capital in view of current single treasury accounts, negative effect on CIF imports, contracts, and what United Capital doing differently to support FOP import contracts? Well, um, what we do at United Capital, and, and I, I need to use this opportunity to share some of our business lines. We have United Capital Investment Banking. And in investment banking, we help you to finance your projects. And we do this through different um, divisions. We have the Capital Market and Mergers and Acquisitions Division that help to, you to raise funding from the capital market and also advise you on acquisitions of other businesses or that you are the business that is a target for acquisition. We advise you on mergers and acquisitions. We also have 
the project finance division and the project finance division deals largely with large scale projects um, like infrastructure projects in the power industry, oil and gas projects, for example, sourcing funds, funding for large scale projects. We do that in the project division. We also have the um, structured trade division and we support SMEs under some of the projects or products that are being run by this division. We have United Capital Asset Management and at United Capital Asset Management, we help you to manage your invest assets. We have mutual funds, collective investment schemes that are duly registered with the SEC. We manage portfolios for our clients as well. Um, and it's under this um, division of, um, of United Capital, which is United Capital Asset Management Limited, that we are also joint fund managers to the ALCB fund, which I talked about earlier. We've got United Capital Securities, which is our stockbroking business, and we help you with trades, to execute trades on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and also trades, of course, on the other platforms, the CC platform, and also on the, um, for, for debt capital trades on the FMDQ, OCC markets. We have um, United Capital Trustees, and United Capital Trustees are trustees in bonds to um, all issues and of course trustees to mutual funds as well and to individuals who want to make estate plans for themselves. We help assist individuals to make long-term estate plans that includes wills, includes personal trusts, includes um, testamentary trusts as well. Um, Does United Capital play in the international bond market? Please share what you know about the bonds. Currently, what we support you with in the international bond market are euro bonds, for example, issued by Nigerian institutions. We're able to help you to acquire. We're able also through our partnership with um, Global Investor Services, which is a division of United Bank for Africa, to help you provide custody for those security assets that you provide for. Um, so these are dollar denominated, foreign currency denominated euro bonds issued by Nigerian institutions largely um, for clients that are interested in buying assets, offshore assets. We also partner with international agencies and assist you in procuring them as well. How can a new startup break into an existing industry with big players? Well, you are going to need a compelling strategy. And then um, one company that has done that internationally is Virgin. And um, I've enjoyed reading um, Richard Branson's book, Like a Virgin. I'm still reading it right now. And um, he mentioned some of the strategies that deployed in competing with um, British Airways, which is it's much, it was much bigger than them. Um, they recognized, for example, that they would not have the advertising budget of a British Airways. So what they decided to do, he personally decided to put himself out there, if necessary, make himself a fool and let the newspapers always be reporting what he was doing. So he became the symbol of the Virgin brand. And that way, he was able to get visibility without necessarily spending you know, millions of pounds on advertisement. They decided that they were going to have a unique value proposition, which was to make sure that clients felt that they were having fun. They made sure that they were always providing a new um, add-on so they were the first to introduce the backseat uh, movies, for example, on the flights. So as a startup, you want to make sure that there's something that you are offering that is unique to you, that is different from what the established players are offering. You want to make sure that you are presenting it again in a unique way. You want to make sure you probably, typically you cannot afford to play, to go into a price war with them because they would, they would just, uh, completely flog you, but you just want to make sure that you have a unique value proposition and then you look for what we call high impact 
low cost ways in which you continue to project brand until you know, and then of course sometimes you also want to find a niche market so you have a particular segment of the market that you are serving and who would come to you for some specific value that you are offering that the big player can't be bothered to offer or you look for a segment of the market that the big player has overlooked and do not regard as attractive enough for them to be spending their money on what's the best approach to hiring for a startup i think hiring whether for a startup or for an established business Hiring is very critical. At all times, you want to make sure that you have the best team that you can afford. At all times, you want to make sure that you have people that have the best attitude. So increasingly, we're finding that employers are not just hiring for skill, but they're hiring for attitude. Now, a startup typically will require hours of work by your employees. Your employees will typically work long hours. Your employees will sometimes work in environments that are not exactly structured. Your employees will many times need to go out to meet the customer rather than the client coming to your big you know, shop or big office to see you. So therefore, it's very important to hire for attitude. You need to hire people that, have, that are flexible. You need to hire people that are driven. You need to hire people that will be prepared to put in the extra effort. So you actually need to be very, very careful with those whom you are hiring. Many times also, you're going to be lean on staff. So you're going to need to trust yourselves because unlike with other, um, the kind of um, checks and balances that you find in more established businesses. And by the way, I encourage you to also put in place as many checks and balances as you can. But once in a while, you're going to find that because this is a startup, the same employee is processing an entire chain, you know, right from marketing the client to um, making the sale to collecting, you know, the um, um, proceeds. And you just want to make sure that you are hiring people that you can trust and have a good track record. So you need to investigate the background of you be very careful in investigating the background of those you're bringing into the business. Those are some of the hints for um, hiring for a startup. startup. Is there a recommended percentage to pay a business partner? Well, it will depend on the nature of the partnership. If your partner is offering you a loan, obviously you're going to agree amongst yourselves as to what the rate of interest on the loan is. And typically, it will be based on the available options that you have. So the going rates in the market for your size of business and the business with your kind of track record. Now, if it is equity, obviously, what you're going to pay him will depend on the percentage of equity he has in the business. So if, for example, your business is worth 100,000 Naira, and he has given you 10,000 Naira, he's a 10% owner of your business. And so he should get 10% of the profits of the business. If he's a strategic partner or a marketing partner and he's providing a marketing, then the two of you will agree on what that service is worth and your, the commissions that you're going to pay him, obviously, are going to get a going rate in the market and what the two of you have agreed. The one thing that I would say is please honor all your agreements. Um, the one thing that you need as a startup or an entrepreneur is your credibility. If you lose your credibility, you're gone. So whatever business deals you make with partners, please honor your side of the deal. And then that was an opportunity for such partners to keep doing larger and bigger things, more higher scales with you in the future. At what point do you start to pay yourself as a founder or CEO? I would recommend that you start paying yourself from the beginning. If you are working directly in the business, now you're not paying yourself as a founder, you're paying yourself as the CEO. Because you can be a founder and not be an executive in the business, in which case you don't pay your risk, you take profits at the end of the day. If you are a, you're running the business, you're a manager, you're a CEO, then you need to factor in 
a reasonable salary. And when I say reasonable, it's not reasonable compared to what an MD, you know, in the United Capital is earning. It's reasonable compared to the size of your business, the industry within which you are operating, and what your business can afford. So it's very good to factor into your business's expenses, the cost of your services from day one, because that enables you to properly appraise what your business, what what actually, actually your business is actually making as profits. So if you're putting all your time into the business and you're not paying yourself and you're not recording what should be your salary, then you're not properly accounting for the costs of the business. So it's very important to allocate a salary to everybody that is working in the business. Even if at the end of the day, you reinvest that salary into the business, then you reinvest it as additional equity in the business. And it's, again, it's recorded for you as additional equity. How easy is it to form joint ventures and strategic alliances with your bank? We are always interested, United Capital is always interested in mutually beneficial alliances. We're open to ideas. Um, we primarily provide advisory services. So the, the way we operate essentially is not usually by way of ventures, it's by way of providing our professional services for which we are remunerated. But our minds are not closed. We're, we're open to ideas that can add value to us, especially maybe in areas that are within our scope, but we are not currently in those geographies. So you can always um, access us through our website. And I am very open. You can always send me, um, con uh, contact me on all the social media that um, I'm I'm on LinkedIn, I'm very, very uh, openly on LinkedIn. So, so we keep our minds open. Okay. Do you have a self-explanatory bookkeeping format for accounting? I, um, this is not, um, I, I would recommend that you, you know, approach um, accounting firms and ask them for guidance about that. That's not exactly what we do at United Capital, and I would not begin to recommend to you or open to you how what accounting format. And in any event, your choice of accounting format will differ from business to business, and depending on which geography you are operating from. What's your uh, opinion on operating in a country without a favorable ecosystem? Definitely. Um, your macro environmental um, assessment is very important in deciding the geography you want to operate from. So you need to have evaluated that within this system, there is a favorable environment for you. Even if the environment is relatively hostile, there are opportunities that you can exploit and there is a strategy that you can adopt. And that perhaps that is actually the business, the value proposition, which is that other people cannot see the way around it. So you have a unique approach to thriving in that environment, and that, that's what you want to exploit. But the most important thing is having a well-defined strategy to operate wherever you choose to operate. Do I keep? Do I keep chasing a business idea no one else valuable? You need to look at, invariably, in every business idea you have, you have a target market. So definitely you are going to, be, you are going to need to in, interest some people in your product. So what you need to do is to sit down and work out the value proposition. Is, is what you are trying to do meeting a gap? in society is what you're trying to do, meeting a need that people will be willing to pay for. If it is, then you don't need to be discouraged by the opinions of those around you. You need to, sometimes you will need to do a test survey, many times actually, 
you will need to, in fact, as part of your business plan, you will need to do a survey exactly who would be interested in what you are trying to produce or for market and who, what would they be willing to pay for it? If you have those ascertained, then the fact that um, people around you are not excited about your business idea should not discourage you. How do I know the amount of equity to give investors? How do I value my non-financial efforts since inception? Um, let me start from the second part of that question. Your non-financial efforts since inception, you value, like I said before, at a fair rate for the service that you are offering. You look at the industry, you look at businesses of your size, you look at what your business can afford. If, if you were going to hire you, if you were, if you were going to hire yourself, what would be a reasonable price at which both the employer and the employee will strike the deal? And that's what you use to value your inputs. And like I said, record it from the beginning. We will help you. Now, how do you know the amount of equity to give investors? Clearly, you're going to give the proportion of equity that aligns with the volume that your investor is bringing in. But even whilst you do that, you also have in mind that you want to stay, retain what level of control you want to retain over your business. So if you want to continue to have majority control, then you make sure at no time you give away more than 49% equity in your business. If you want to, if you want to, um, you're willing to share control with you, then you can give up to 50%. So it will depend on all those factors. How do you manage an untrustworthy partner in business? If you are sure your partner is untrustworthy, is not trustworthy, I think trust is very, very critical in every business venture. If, unfortunately, you are already in partnership with this person before you found that they are not trustworthy, then you need to put in place checks and balances that will minimize the kind of damage you can do, that will provide enough transparency around what the business makes and what the business owns and the parts of the business that are under their control. You might want to um, arrange yourself such that your untrustworthy partners are not in executive position. So you have independent executives that are running the business and you just draw profits from the business. But if your partner that you don't trust is the one driving and running the business, then there's potential for them to do a lot of damage to you. But like I said, when you, if you are really sure that your partner is not trustworthy, you want to have a plan to gradually exit from that relationship. I think trust the bedrock of every relationship. And I think, and this is not just business relationships, even personal relationships and friendships as well. I've got three minutes left, and I'm just gonna use the opportunity to remind you that your business dream can be fulfilled. I have written a book, and the title of my book is Yes, You Too Can Maximize Your Life. My book is available on Amazon, and um, both the hard copy and the Kindle copy. And if you um, send me a message on LinkedIn, I can also arrange for you to get um, a physical copy, um, particularly if you are here in Lagos, Nigeria. If you are outside Lagos, then I will have to direct you back to uh, um, Amazon. But what I said in the book is that you can really achieve your objectives, you can achieve your dreams. You need to plan, you need to be determined, you need to be committed, you need to encourage yourself and you need not to allow yourself to be overwhelmed. In, uh, uh, you need to understand that your business idea invariably is not a 100 meter dash. It's a marathon race. At different points in time, you will come up with obstacles. What you need to do is to study the nature of your obstacle and find a way over it. And um, then you keep going. Um, you will make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. But the most important thing is not to keep repeating mistakes. I, all that having said that, I wish you every success with your business ideas.
and business initiatives, African leads entrepreneurs, they are the lifeblood of our economies. We need the small and medium scale uh, businesses. They employ about 45% of Africans. And um, so we need to, to get up and start your business. Don't forget the first and most important thing is to articulate your plan. Write it down. Write it down. Question it. Answer your own questions. Get opinions. Get the have the facts, have the figures, and then set about convincing those who you want to partner with you in this business. I wish you every success with your entrepreneurial dream. Thank you very much for participating in this webinar. And um, thank you to the Tony Lee Foundation for the opportunity to share some of my thoughts with the wonderful participants of this webinar today.